Excellent. I'm doing a video on a flash drive, but wait, this is no ordinary flash drive. It's the Corsair Flash Voyager GTX 256 gigabyte. And I don't even want to call it a flash drive anymore. I want to call it an external SSD, which is pretty much what it is since it uses a Fison S9 controller and runs at speeds that will put any flash drive you currently own to shame. Let's go through some of the Flash Voyager GTX's bona fides before I move into a video editing demo. I want to point out that this is a new version, model CMFVY GTX 3B. Uh, there was a version without that B at the end uh, that released last year, uh, but that one's dumb and this one's much better. Okay, th this one's just newer and has some new features. But uh, hopefully it's obvious that this is a USB 3.0 drive, which is also backwards compatible with USB 2.0, of course. It'll also work with Windows, Mac, OS X, and Linux systems with no driver installation necessary. It's got a five frickin' year warranty, which is nice, a redesigned zinc alloy housing, which gives it some considerable heft for its size, and it also aids in heat dissipation. I will warn you guys that this drive heats up a little bit when it's in use. It's not gonna burn you by touching it or anything, but I can see why Corsair essentially made this housing into one big metal heatsink. Physically, it's not the largest USB drive I've seen, but it is a bit wider than some, so it could block some uh, neighboring ports depending on how they're laid out on your desktop or laptop PC. There's a blue LED drive access indicator light at the other end, which is thankfully not blinding, uh, but there's also a key ring slot, which seems to get the job done. I will say that a couple nice to have add-ons that Corsair might have included here would be a small USB extension cable for systems with cramped port spacing, and some kind of strap or cord to retain the cap. Uh, losing the cap for a USB drive is an egregious pet peeve of mine, so that would be nice to have. Speed though. That's really what this drive is all about, and Corsair is making some hefty claims here. 450 megabytes per second reads and 360 megabytes per second writes based on their testing with Atto. 430 megabytes per second reads and 190 megabyte, megabytes per second writes, that's with Crystal Disk Mark. That's really fast, so I'm gonna run some of my own tests to confirm those theoretical numbers. And I also wanna show you guys what I'll actually be using this drive for, uh, actually to replace this, this right here. Uh, this is for editing on the road. This has been my uh, solution for a little bit of a time now. This is basically my sort of trusty USB 3.0 to SATA adapter connected to an Intel SSD. When I edit on the road with my laptop, I like to have my raw video files on a separate drive from the operating system and the Premier cache drive, which runs off the laptop's internal SSD. My adapter-based external solution does work, but it's not quite as portable, and I'm constantly afraid that I'll break the SATA connectors on the 2.5-inch SSD because I'm always in a rush and I just toss the whole thing into my bag without actually unplugging the adapter. Ladies and gentlemen, today's video is brought to you by lynda.com. Now, I've already explained that lynda.com is an online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. But today I wanna to highlight another helpful feature that they've got going on, and that is playlists. These are groups of videos curated by lynda.com with a focus on accomplishing a specific task or learning about a new field, such as app development, becoming a better manager, or learning all about camera lenses, for example. These playlists bring together video sessions from other areas on lynda.com and provide another way to add to your skill set while focusing on a specific goal rather than an application or general topic. So if learning new and useful things appeals to you, you can get a 10-day free trial by visiting lynda.com slash paul. That will allow you to try out any of their courses without spending a dime, so go ahead and click the sponsor link in this video's description or visit lynda.com slash paul. And after a random transition to a quick shot of Nori asleep on the couch, it's time for some coffee table benchmarking. That's the best kind of benchmarking, right? So uh, here's what I'm gonna be doing, guys. I wanted to double check Corsair's numbers they're listing on the package for this drive. And then I also wanted to sort of give some real world comparisons between what it can do, what I usually use it for, or what I what I intend to use it for, and, and if that if it actually makes what I'm doing better. I hope all that makes sense, all right. Um, so for comparison, I have, of course, the Flash Voyager GTX, which is, which is right there. Looking nice and pretty. Um, I'm not going to be comparing this one. This is the Flash Voyager GS. It's actually like just arrived, honestly, like as I was setting up for this. Uh, so this one is a little bit slower, not quite as fast as a GTX. Still up to uh, 295 megabytes per second reads and up to 290 megabytes per second writes, depending on what you're using to test it, of course. And uh, this is a 512 gig one. So if you guys are interested in capacity, maybe, or speed, but not quite as much speed as a GTX, 
The GS is also available. That's another option. But uh, for comparison, I'm com I'm going to be throwing in the uh, Flash Voyager GT right there, the USB 3.0 version. That's a 64 gig one, and I've been using that for some time now. It's a very fast drive, but not as fast as the GTX is supposed to be. Now I'm going to be doing like the straight up. Crystal Disk Mark and uh, Atto benchmarks on these two drives right here. Uh, and then I also ran for, just for a basis of comparison, a test on my internal SSD. That's the Plextor M5 Pro, as you might be able to see right there. And this is direct attached serial ATA. So this is going to show you kind of some of the limitations you get when you're going external with like a USB 3.0 as opposed to internal SATA. So this is like SATA Re Rev 3. So 523 megabytes per second reads, 460 megabytes per second writes. That's about what anyone should expect, whether you're talking about a desktop or a laptop drive. So I'm going to run through some screenshots that I took here really quick. We're going to start off with Atto. This is just running at the standard settings. So Q depth is 4. It's running transfer sizes of uh, 0.5 uh, all the way up to 8 megabytes. And uh, you can see all the results right here. Remember, it uh, lists these in kilobytes, not megabytes. So for instance, 322 here is about 322 megabytes per second. 460 is about 460 megabytes per second. We're supposed to hit 450 on the reads and 360 on the writes. So we are getting up to 460 on the reads, so that's definitely achieved there. For the writes, we're actually hitting about 322, so not quite up to what it said on the box. However, um, this is not a benchmarking system. This is a laptop that has been in use. And uh, if I went ahead and gave this like the best possible scenario, I'm guessing I could I could coerce it up to get up a little bit higher. But apart from that, I wanted to show some comparisons here. So let me jump over and at least do my best attempt to do that. So here's uh, looking at the uh, GTX, the Voyager GTX on the left, and the uh, internal Plexter M5 Pro on the right. This is not a fair comparison. M5 Pro performs much better again because it's an internal drive and all that stuff I said. Also keep in mind the scale on the right goes all the way up to a thousand. Uh, so yeah, we can basically see here's what you might expect for an internal drive. Here's what you're seeing for this external drive. Still very good performance uh, overall, but let's give it maybe a bit more of a fair comparison here. So let me jump over to my Voyager GT results, and we'll put that up side by side. So here you can see uh, this scale, by the way, goes up to 200 on the right, and this scale goes up to 500 on the left. So here you can see the Voyager GT, which had a much more reasonable for a, a flash drive. About 190 megabytes per second reads was the highest it got up to. Writes didn't even get up over 100, so we hit uh, what 85 megabytes per second most, and that is definitely one of the limiting factors for external drives like this. So here we can see a very vast difference in read and write speeds going from uh, the Voyager GT to the Voyager GTX, just as expected. Next up, here's a look at Crystal Disk Mark. Again, the Voyager GTX results are on the left side there, and you can see the reads getting up to about 400 megabytes per second. Uh, the writes here peaked at 180 megabytes per second, uh, and that is, again, just shy of what we saw in the retail box, which for Crystal Disk Mark was claiming 190 megabytes per second on the writes and about 430 megabytes per second on the reads. Reads uh, seem to suffer a little bit more in this test as well. But again, on the right, I've got the Plextor M5 Pro, which is an internal drive, which isn't a fair comparison, but just to give you guys an idea of what you could be seeing here. So looking at the Voyager GT numbers, again, we can see where the GTX kind of shines, and that is with the reads going from 150 up to 393. Uh, the writes going from 73 to 179. Uh, and then especially if you look down here at stuff like your writes in the queued up 32 area, like, oh my gosh, vast, vast difference here. And 4K numbers are very important. Uh, don't don't count them out. They're not as impressive as, as the big sequential numbers and everything, but um, I'm going to show here in just a minute how small file size transfers uh, are very important in lots of situations. And my real world test here is pretty simple. Basically, I have what I consider to be a very challenging thing for Adobe Premiere to do. I'm using Adobe Premiere CS6, by the way. And that is to load up one of my time lapse uh, configurations. When I do time lapses, I usually end up with something in the 2000 to 5000 uh, image count range that I need to load all up into a single project in order to render out a time lapse. And whereas most of my projects, which are 1080, and aren't all that complicated and load up pretty fast, even on something like a laptop, uh, to say nothing of my my desk or my desktop workstations, which are pretty powerful. 
uh, I think this is something that I typically see Adobe taking a little bit more time to do, and that's because it's dealing with all of those tiny little files. So I have one time-lapse project here that I'm going to load up, and I'm going to do it four different ways. I'm going to do it off of my external SSD right here. I'm going to do it off of the internal Plex Store SSD. I'm going to do it off of the Corsair GTX, of course. And then I'm also going to do it off of the Corsair Flash Voyager GT. Still thinking. Still thinking. There it is, finally. There is one more thing I wanted to show you guys in here, though, before I move on to that final test, and that is uh, this little indicator. Wait, right here. Interface. UASP. That is USB Attached SCSI Protocol. Not all systems are compatible with that. Newer systems should be if they have USB 3.0 natively. But uh, if you're not getting like the max performance out of this drive that you're expecting, it might be because you have an older system that's only compatible with BOT. B-O-T, which is, I believe, batch bulk, bulk only transfer. I forget what that stands for. But UA UASP came along with USB 3.0. It's faster and it's able to uh, actually use some of the SATA protocol hooks. So it's better. But uh, I'm happy to say that the drive automatically and immediately just worked as UASP, UASP when plugged in here. I didn't have to do any fancy configuration stuff to get that going. But anyway, here's what I'm going to do now. I have two of these sequences queued up to render two of the exact same... Uh, time-lapse sequence that I was showing you guys before. One of them the, is going to be coming off of the internal drive, writing to the internal drive, and the second one is going to be uh, picking up everything off of the Voyager GTX, but then writing uh, the rendered file to the internal drive. So let's see how these two play out. Run 1 is finishing up. Uh, elapsed so far is about 3 minutes and 22 seconds. We are coming down to the wire here again. This is from the internally rendered uh, time lapse. And my goodness, we have an entire three second difference. It went from 322 to 325. So, my, my theory here about how my example, oh, it's done. My example uh, showing a significant difference from one to the other, I think was probably limited by the complexity of the project itself. Um, I was expecting many small files to give this a bit more of a challenge to work with, but the internal SSD being a very fast SSD as it is, I think was pretty helpful there. Uh, and also the fact that I wasn't really doing anything at all in the background, so it was able to concentrate entirely on the render. However, rendering from this external stick was still a little bit faster, and you can imagine extrapolating that out to, say, a much more complex project, or say a much larger time-lapse, for example, this project was about 4,000 images. Ultimately though, I think uh, where this is really going to help out is for people who maybe don't have quite as high quality of an inter internal drive going on, or if you just have lots of other stuff going on with the system. And uh, even though time-wise, just this example I showed here wasn't a significant difference, I think it could make more of a difference depending on what you're doing. And I also do like the idea, or, or just the general best practice of uh, having a separate drive from your operating system and your program's uh, drive to keep your raw files on and that sort of thing. It also means that it's being stored in a separate location too. So there you have it folks, and if you're interested in other uses for this drive aside from what I've already shown, well it's of course great for large file transfers, that kind of goes without saying, or you could even set it up as a bootable operating system drive for dual boot or recovery purposes. I'm sure there's other uses for this drive too, so let me know in the comments what you would do with this external SSD, aka the Corsair Flash Voyager GTX 256 gig. Before you move on to the next video though, I also welcome you to hit that like button if you enjoyed this one, subscribe to my channel for more tech videos, share this video with your friends or your enemies, and uh, check out my t-shirt store at store.paulshairboard.net. That's a great way to support my channel. And as always, thanks for watching.